so nice to see you all back here i hope you're having an amazing day so far and today i want to share the video settings i use for my sony a6400 remember there is not one single truth of setting it up as there are almost endless ways of doing it based on your needs and preferences so if your settings are different feel free to share them down below in the comment section for others to see and let's get started first of all make sure your camera is set in movie shooting mode then hit the menu button on your camera and let's start with the second menu item and the first page called movie so here we have exposure mode and I personally shoot in manual exposure and I highly recommend you doing the same. This will give you the most control over the footage since you can adjust the aperture and shutter speed manually. I'll show you what you need to look out for when adjusting it in a bit. File format, well, it depends whether I want to shoot slow motion or not. If I want the highest quality possible, I will choose HAVCS 4K and therefore my frame, frame rate or the record settings will be either uh, 30 frames per second for like normal scenes and 24 frames per second if I want to achieve that cinematic look. But most of the times I actually shoot 24 frames per second, no matter what, to be honest, so whatever. All this is done at 100, 100 megabits per second, which is the highest bit rate for Sony 6400. If I want to shoot slow motion, on the other hand, I must go back to the file format and choose the HAVCS HD, since unfortunately A6400 is not capable of shooting slow motion in 4K. And once that is selected, you can see that the record settings offer a lot more frame rates now. So even though I rarely use 120 frames per second, as I think it's a little bit too slow, I kind of more like the 60 frame per second slow motion. I still choose this frame rate due to two reasons. One. I have the ability to slow down things even more if I want to. And second, it's the only frame rate that shoots 100 megabits per second instead of 50 like the other ones. The downside is that the footage is going to be darker since the shutter speed will need to be quicker. And you know what? Let's address that now. So if uh, I was to shoot at 120 frames per second, I will choose my shutter speed double of the frame rate, which is one over uh, 250th of a second due to the 180 degree rule. If I were to shoot at 24 frames per second, I would set the shutter speed to 150th of a second. All right, back to the menu, uh, S and Q, I don't touch and proxy recording. I don't turn on anymore since my M1 Pro MacBook is powerful enough to work without needing proxies. But if your computer is slow, turn it on and uh, copy both the original and the proxy file over to your drive and set in your editing program, program that you want to work with proxies. Now, if we get back to the first menu uh, item and go to the page 11 out of 14, the color, white balance and image processing, then here the first and the last items are the most important ones. So let's start with the white balance and that really depends on the situation. If I'm recording in my studio like this, um, I set it to um, custom temperature Kelvins, 5400 Kelvin, since my lights are set to that temperature. If there is a mixed lighting scene, I pull out my gray card and let the camera detect the color temperature itself. But if it is a, like a run and gun situation where I'm outside and running from shade to sun and everything in between, well, it's not ideal, I know, but I set it to auto and then probably I cry in a post-production trying to fix the color temperature. And honestly, guys, if you have a better recommendation for those run and gun changing light situations, please let me know down in the comments because that's something I've always been struggling with. Okay, and when it comes to picture profiles, this is probably the most controversial one. Lots of people will shoot in S-Log2 or S-Log3 profiles with S-Gamma3 Cine color mode, which will give the most dynamic range to work with in post-production, which is true, except it is true for 10-bit cameras. Unfortunately, our beloved Sony A6400 is an 8-bit camera, which means it is not capable of capturing and processing as many colors. 8-bit cameras also don't have as good dynamic range, uh, the signal to, no to, to noise, to nose, <laughs> signal to noise ratio or ability to deal with compression artifacts. So shooting in S-Log profiles with edit camera can result in things like banding and color posterization in certain situations, especially when you want to grade the footage in post-production, because that's, I assume, what you're trying to do. Therefore, 
HLG3, which stands for Hybrid Log Gamma, is what I personally choose for these 8-bit cameras. Although there are differences between the HLG, HLG2 and 3, I go with HLG3 since it is designed to produce a bit flatter image than the standard HLG profile. It has a higher mid-tone range which results in a more even distribution of brightness across the image. Of course, it is not as flexible as S-Log on 10-bit cameras. It still makes it easier to grade and manipulate the footage in post-production as it provides more flexibility for adjusting the, uh, the exposure and the color balance uh, compared to something like you know shooting with no picture profile at all also worth mentioning the image does not come out as flat as it would be with s-log so it is definitely easier for beginners and hlg3 can be found under uh, picture profile one and rest of the settings i just leave the standard one and my color mode is 709 and regarding the exposure for this profile, I have found out that exposing it as close to zero as possible generates the best results. Plus 0.3 or plus 0.7 is also fine, but I try not to go in negative values since, it, since raising the shadows in post-production sometimes gives me a bit of noise. And remember, there are many ways to control the light, but I highly suggest you get a VND or variable ND filter to control how much light comes on the sensor. My favorite ones are from Freewell and I actually just made a video about them, so check it out if you haven't already. And one more thing regarding the exposure, the ISO. The minimum or the native ISO for HLG3 is 125, so don't be alarmed if you can't select ISO 100, that's completely normal. Okay, and lastly, focus. Uh, most of the time I'll be shooting in autofocus mode with drive speed to normal and tracking sensitivity to standard if I shoot at 24 or 30 frames per second. However, I usually set it to fast and responsive if I'm shooting in slow motion. And since the A6400 has an audio jack, I set audio recording to on and make sure I have a nice shotgun mic on top uh, since the built-in mic is just horrible. My favorite mics are from Deity. This one is called D3 Pro, or if I want a smaller one, I use this one from Movo VXR10. Obviously, I adjust the audio recording levels and I'm good to go. The rest of the things like zebras and I don't know, like gamma display assist and other cool things really depend on each person if they want to set it up or not, but that's not gonna affect the quality too much. Oh, and uh, one important thing, I forgot to mention, if you are not seeing the same frame rate, frame rate as me, it is possible that you have a different TV setting. <laughs> not your living room TV, but there is one as well. I've set it up mine to NTSC to allow me to shoot at higher frame rate, uh, even though here in Europe, I believe you're supposed to use PAL. Uh, you can change this setting by going to the fifth menu item and uh, second page setup to, and on the bottom, you'll just see it. Also, you can set up your custom menu under this star icon for the most used items. Again, I'm not a cinema expert, rather a beginner, and there are many ways to set up your A6400 for shooting videos, but these are the settings I personally use and find easy to work with. Please don't forget to experiment with different settings yourself to find what works best for you. Thank you for watching. We'll see each other in the next video and don't forget to keep on creating. <laughs> Attack.